Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now my name of course is Resident and today is a bit of a quick video. Now just before we get into the video I just kind of wanted to say sorry guys for not uploading for a couple of days. Um, I've been very busy, just started back up in sixth form or college or whatever. Some Well, it's just, well it is sixth form but same year as college. Um, America, I don't know what, I don't know what it's called in America because college is like uni in America but... I don't know. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm going to get back into making videos now properly. And uh, I just kind of had a couple of days off because some stuff's been going on. But we're back into the video. Now, a lot of you may remember, a little while ago I, I made a video about the the Mountain Blade professional league, you call it? I don't know. The Mountain Blade kind of a league kind of thing. So this is... Uh, com competitive Mountain Blade. A lot of you didn't know competitive Mountain Blade was even a thing. Um, there was a number of comments saying, hey, I had no idea this was a thing. Thanks for making a video. It was really interesting. And actually, that's exactly how I thought. Um, if anyone remembers, I did mention I was contacted by a Gibby who told me about the competitive gaming in Mountain Blade and uh, told me that I should come along, do some streams, do some videos on the... Um, the competition, the tournament, and all the different rounds in it. And I said I would, but I said I'd also make a uh, informational video for the viewers that can kind of take part in it. Because I know there's a lot of you that are very good at Mountain Blade and might want to take part in this. So he's contacted me again, and he's he's got a bit more information. So I thought I should share it with you guys. He asked me to share this with you guys, so um, you guys can get involved. Um, a lot of people did ask, how can we get involved? Do we just want to stream, or can we actually fight in this tournament? And this is what this informational video is about. So, the bit of information he gave me was a bit of rule changing. And uh, let's start from the top. So, it says here, sign-ups will open on the 11th of October. So basically, yeah, on the 11th of October, you guys will be able to sign up. Sign up your groups, maybe uh, try and find a group that you can join and get into this. Get involved with the tournaments. Now, the group stages of the tournaments will actually last six weeks, so it's not just a, a short thing. It's with quite a long time. It's such a long time period that this tournament, this competition is going on. It's going to be quite interesting to watch. Hopefully, you guys will be following it. I'll definitely be following it and uh, on the channel as well. Keeping you updated what team's going through, what team's winning. And, uh, yeah, so there's a lot more interesting things coming up on that. The next thing is the flag system will be changing. Um... There's a couple of bits of information about how it's changing, um, but not too much detail at the moment. I'll have to find that out for you guys, um, a bit more detail about how it will be changing. But of course, the maps will be accommodated for this. They'll be changing the maps, um, editing them to make it more accustomed to the new map changes um, for the flag system. And uh, so hopefully this flag system will enhance the competitive playability of the maps, and it will make it a lot more interesting and cool to watch. Um, so, rather than spawning at 2 minutes, the flags will now spawn 15 seconds into this round. Now, what this means basically is, instead of having to wait 2 minutes of just fighting before you can get the flag and win, it's almost straight away, 15 seconds into the round, people are going to be fighting over that point. Now, obviously the maps will be accommodated for this, but what this is going to do, this is going to bring people into a smaller area to fight for. People aren't really going to be spread around, but what I've from from what I've seen of competitive gameplay anyway, people work together as groups, they've trained together, they work together as their group, as their clan, to win the battles. So that's not too much of a problem, but it will bring more people into a certain point, a set point in the map, and I guess that's how the map is going to be accommodated for this new thing. Flag raise time will be increased by 10 seconds. So obviously, if anyone knows, in native, this kind of stuff, you go to the flags um, to capture the battlefield, you go to the flags and you raise the flag and the first person to get their flag up wins the battle. Obviously killing people around it means you've got more chance of getting your flag up. If they kill you, obviously you can't get your flag up. So that's kind of how it works. But increasing it by 10 seconds kind of balances out the whole 15 second into the round the flag spawning. So instead of it spawning later on in the round, it spawns sooner, but it takes a lot longer. Well, 10 seconds. But 10 seconds is a lot in this kind of situation for the flag to go up. I mean, many of you will be like, 10 seconds, that's not very long. But in this kind of situation, 10 seconds can be 3, 4 kills um, for a good player. So that could be wiping out the whole team in 10 seconds if they get a good few chambers, some good kills. Um, and text, you can do a lot in 10 seconds. You can win the game in just that 10 second short time by just killing off a few of the men. So a 10 second flag raise time will be increased. Um, so obviously, I can't 
I'm not quite sure how long it takes to get the flag up normally, but whatever it is, it's increased by 10 seconds, which means there's a lot more chance of fighting and a lot more chance of fighting over that point to get the person, to get the faction that will win. And obviously that 10 seconds is going to be crucial for one team to maybe be victorious over the second team. If they can get like that extra kill in that 10 seconds, they're more likely to win the round. Match day picks and bans will be implemented. If you break one of these rules in the match day, you will be banned. I know it sounds a bit harsh, but this is competitive Mountain Blade. They, I'm about to tell you how much the prize pool has gone up too soon, and you'll be blown away. It's absolutely massive, so they have to be really strict with this. It has to be fair play all the way around. If you break the rules, you're going to get banned. That's just how it works. So that's something you guys have got to watch out for. But if you follow the rules, it'll all be completely fine. And obviously, they'll still be sticking with the current match counting system. First to three, four sets, and two maps. I think that really gives a good amount of diversity. It gives a good amount of time to rethink your plan if you're not doing so well, or a good amount of time to maybe change it up so the enemy doesn't know what you're going to do. Let's say you have one tactic one round the enemy kind of learns how to counter that you're gonna have to change it so first of three four sets really helps you be able to kind of change your tactics around for the next rounds and it adds a lot of diversity to the games it's not too short but it's not too long either and i think that is a really good choice for them to stick with that now here's the exciting bit now last time i did say there is a two thousand dollar prize pool which is absolutely insane this this guys is absolutely insane i don't know how they did it I don't know who they got the sponsorship from. It's not gone up to $3,000. Not $4,000. But $10,000. How insane is that? The prize pool for the Mountain Blade Warband competitive event that you'll be able to sign up for October will have a $10,000 prize pool. An event of Mountain Blade Warband, which is a small indie game, and having a $10,000 prize pool. I have no idea where they got the sponsor from that. Gibby, I know you'll be watching this. Leave it in the comments for everyone to see. Um, how did they get the sponsors for this? This is absolutely amazing. And I'm sure this, <laughs> uh, this guy gives you a lot of incentive for you guys to sign up, make your own teams, do a bit of practice. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see what you guys can come up with. Now, also, they've been asking Tail Worlds to have a great interest in supporting the tournament. In the past, it has been said that Tail Worlds have actually provided servers for this, because um, Tail Worlds are fairly interested. I think I heard that Captain Lust, uh, I think his name is, or as a lot of people call him, the Ed Sheeran from Tail Worlds, he's, he's the guy that you see on all the Tail Worlds streams and stuff, talking about it, the guy with the glasses, the ginger guy with the glasses. Um, He's a nice guy, he's a nice guy, but he used to be part of the uh, Mountain Blade competitive scene from what I've heard. So that's really cool, and um, the administration of these tournaments are trying to get in Tail Wars to be more interested in it. Um, but that'll be really cool to see what Tail Wars can come up with if they want to support the tournament anymore. But other than that, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. If you did, remember to hit the like button, you know what to do if you didn't. And subscribe to the channel for more content on this, I will be covering this in the future. But other than that, I will see you in the next one.